everyone. Welcome back to Life Learning with me, Christy. Um, I'm a full-time uh, student at WGU studying uh, my bachelor's degree in education. Um, I would like to just kind of talk to you guys about how to study and pass an OA. Um, an OA is short for an objective assessment. If you would like to know more about this and like what it consists of and what it's like to take one, um, I have a more descriptive video that kind of talks about it and I'll kind of post it <laughs> uh, up here. Um, today I'm going to be talking about what you should do before the OA, um, kind of talk to you about my process, about how I get ready to take an OA, um, how to plan out your studying, um, and other general kind of tips. And I'm also going to talk about what you should do during the OA. I think it's very important to know that sometimes everybody has their different methods when taking an exam, but but for particularly for taking a Proctor WGU exam, the OA, I think it's helpful to know like how to get ready, uh, what do you do during, what are your strategies, um, when will I get my score, things like that. I think are very very important, and I'm going to talk to you about that as well. Um, if you have any other questions or comments that maybe I didn't mention, don't forget to leave it down below. And thank you again for liking and subscribing. It really means a lot uh, when you support my channel. So let's get started. The first thing that you should do before the OA is to review your notes and take the pre-assessment. Use the score to make a study plan. So once you take the pre-assessment, even if you pass, I still recommend that you do this. Using that score, rank each unit from hardest or not competent or approaching competency to competent. The ones that you haven't approached competency yet, you're going to study these the most. And the ones that, are, that you are competent in, you're just going to review them. You want to plan how many days it might take you to study, what to study, and how to study using study methods of your choice. Create a chart or diagram to show what you will include for each unit. The units that are hardest to study need to be studied first, and the ones that are you're competent in, you will just review them. In the chart for each unit, include topics that are mentioned, that way you um, have like that as a reference. Also include your favorite study methods. Mine are flashcards, mind maps, um, I like to use the learning objectives. I like to make my own study guide, and sometimes I will refer to YouTube videos. Also include how long it will take you, whether this is hours or days for you, and any live sessions or cohorts that you will be attending to study. Don't forget to use a timer for each study session to take breaks. So bring some snacks, water, maybe a favorite playlist for each session. With each unit you have passed, keep another chart to review those units um, that you are competent in and review daily for 15 to 30 minutes at least. Once you feel like you have mastered a unit from the unit that was hard, hardest for you, um, go ahead and put that in the review pile. And again, just keep studying daily 15 to at least 30 minutes. When you are ready to schedule your OA, plan for at least three days before for final review session days. During this time, I recommend you check out um, your other flashcards, maybe test out of them, or use another study method that maybe you haven't used. Um, I also use this time to write what I take away from each unit. So I'll write things that really inspired me, that I want to apply to my career. And also use any other, like I said, other study methods that maybe you just didn't get to do that now you have some extra time to do this. And my final review session days, I normally do maybe an hour to two hours, but for you, I would say just at least an hour. I will post below how you can have a sample of the study plan, if you wish. The next thing I would ask you to do is to plan out your studying. 
you want to make sure your study schedule is busy. <laughs> you want to organize your space. You want to use those favorite study methods. Take those brain breaks and use a consistent schedule or routine. My next thing is to start small. So break up sessions into smaller ones if you need to. If starting is difficult for you, just try 30 minutes and see if you're able to keep going. With some breaks in between, I might add. Set daily goals and reflect after you study. The next thing is to believe in yourself because your attitude matters. Don't think about not passing. Have confidence in yourself. And I know sometimes um, you might see in maybe your social media groups that you follow about how someone was not able to pass this uh, course that you're on. Don't equate their experience for yours. Having a positive mindset during studying and right before you take your away is really important. And when you're ready, go ahead and schedule your OA. The next thing I'd recommend is attending any cohorts. This is great for review. Um, there's lots of practice questions and tips. Sometimes there will be a special cohort dedicated to the actual OA. I recommend you going to that one because it will really help you to be prepared. Um, you can also ask live questions and the instructors will really help you when you do your study sessions. The last thing I'd recommend is to take something away from the course. As I said, this can go back to your final study sessions where you actually write something down for each unit, or you can share it in other ways, maybe with somebody else or just writing it out um, for yourself. You know, giving this the course meaning and purpose will help you to inspire not just for your career, but It'll actually teach you and help you to apply it better and really help you for when you are going to take your OA. Okay, so what should you be doing for the OA? Test day is here and you're ready to take it. Um, first and foremost, you should always get ready. Um, I usually wake up an hour or two before my OA starts, and I typically schedule my OA during the week, um, really early in the morning, sometimes between 7 or 9 a.m., um, and I mostly do this because um, I have a noisy neighbor next door, and he's always doing stuff in the afternoon and evening, which prevents me, you know, I, I want my, I want it to be where I take my OA to be distraction free. So that's what you really want. You have to be thinking about, you know, your schedule, which day really fits you, which time really fits you, your outside surroundings. And um, you also wanna make sure you've got a connection to your internet or Wi-Fi. So for let, let's just say, for instance, um, the day before, the day of, the morning of, you see that there's a connection loss, maybe there's a weather, um, occurrence or some sort of storm or something, you can reschedule it. I think though you have, I think the window to reschedule is like, I think maybe an hour before. Um, so really make sure that everything's set to go. Um, I always clear my desk. I kind of wipe it down. I, I set out all the stuff that I need. Um, you'll need your government ID. Um, I usually have my whiteboard with me, whether I need it or not. And um, I usually turn off my phone as well. But once I start getting up an hour or two before, I usually eat something small. Um, and I also make sure I drink plenty of water um, with as well. You can have a water with you. It's just got to be in like a clear glass and it's got to be on the table. Um, I typically don't bring anything to eat or drink, obviously, when I'm taking my test. Um, because I really don't want to use that break. Um, you can have, I think it's a five to 10 minute break during, but you have to be within the camera frame. They have to be able to see you. So typically I won't be able to use the bathroom per se um, during the exam. So I just try not to eat or drink anything an hour before my test. Um, but I do make sure that, you know, I eat something before, um, I, I kind of dance around. I kind of get all, all my nerves out. Um, 
practice meditation, do some self-care, do whatever you need to do just to knock out those nerves that you can get ready to take her away. Um, and like I said, just make sure you have that camera. You've got your whiteboard. If you need a calculator as well, um, make sure you put your phone up um, and make sure you have that government ID because they will want to see it. So during um, during your exam, um, your proctor, the, the person who's watching you is going to give you, um, they'll kind of take you through the steps of what it's like. Um, they'll make sure that you have all the required stuff, all the required format of everything with your computer. Um, they'll make sure every other, uh, other apps or other applications are kind of closed down. Other windows are kind of closed. Um, they'll give you like a passcode that only they can use to type in your task and then you'll you'll start and your OA is typically timed so keep that in mind usually when it starts for me I typically hide my timer I do check back with it uh, throughout but I don't like to have it out because for me it's a distraction and I just don't want to upset my nerves <laughs> Um, so, and then you can also like change the font. So if the font of the test is too small, you can kind of enlarge it and make it a little bigger. Sometimes I do that with myself just to really help me focus. Um, you can also bookmark a question if you need to. This is great if you're just really stuck. Don't spend so much time on each question. Typically, even though you have plenty of time, typically you want to spend a few minutes on each question. And sometimes during your OA, they will give you an extra five to 10 questions to answer. This is really just for them. This is not going to impact your score. They always say this up front as well. Um, so you can just, you know, if you've got a particular question that you, you need to come back to, bookmarking is great. Um, I use my whiteboard. There's my whiteboard and this is the other side of it. Um, I use my whiteboard to write down like any important things about the questions. So um, if I'm really stuck on something, what I tend to do is I write down everything on the whiteboard, what I think I know about the concept um, that they're asking me or about that particular question in general. Um, and then I start crossing out answers using the whiteboard. Sometimes um, I'll write the answers down and then kind of cross it out. Um, or I'll just cross it out in my head. Um, I always say, go with your gut choice. You should never, ever, ever change your answer unless you unless you realize it's like a like a mistake, like you picked the really wrong answer. Um, I never second guess myself, and I usually have a hard time second guessing myself on other stuff as well. But I never second guess myself when I'm taking an OA, because typically you want to go with your gut choice. Even if you're stuck and you just, you really don't know, and you make that educated guess, don't touch it. Just leave it alone and go to the next question. Um, when you're finished, um, it's important to go back to each question and just kind of make sure that you got everything down. Typically, I ask myself um, to justify each answer in my head. So you know, for question five, you know, why did I pick this one? I picked this one because X, Y, and Z um, in my head. Now, it's important to know during the OA, you can't really talk. You can't really read the question out aloud to yourself. So um, if you need an accommodation for that, I highly recommend going to the student center for that to request an accommodation if you need during your OA. Um, that is particularly helpful, but for those of you who don't need an accommodation, just be aware that you can't really um, talk during your test. Um, you will get your score um, immediately after. It should be within 24 hours at the most. I've usually, usually I've gotten back uh, an, uh, an OA score like right then. Um, you will want to exit out of the window that you're using and start up a new window in order to see that just so it kind of refreshes the thing because if you go back to um, where your course is, it's not going to show up. So you're gonna to wanna to exit out and reopen it again. Um, 
If not, again, like I said, wait 24 hours, but it should kind of pop up. Your score will be explained um, by using the same report as your pre-assessment. So it'll kind of show things that are competent. You might get something that's exemplary, which will be in blue, competence in green, approaching competency is in like a yellowish kind of orange, and then um, not competent, I think is in red. Um, I have passed an OA with one section being approaching or a couple sections being approaching, but typically it's because I was so competent in other areas or I've made an exemplary score in um, other sections that allowed me to pass. So, um, yeah, if you have to retake it, there's no shame in retaking something. Um, I suggest making an appointment with your instructor um, to go over your score. Um, don't email, do not email. <laughs> Talk to your instructor about your score through the phone because they can give you some better insight and they can, again, provide you with the, maybe additional resources that maybe you didn't use before and now that you can use. Um, you can also reach out to your student center for help. Um, and you can use your attempt score report to make a new study plan, start over, um, highlight areas you still were not competent in um, or approaching competency, um, and then let your mentor know your new game plan, your new study plan, just so that you can kind of get like an update, you know, hey, I didn't really pass the first time, but I'm doing this, I'm doing that, I think I'm really confident, I think I'll be able to take it you know, this week, this day, whatever. The first three times I believe um, are free to retake it. But after that, I think you have to pay like a small fee. Um, I'm not exactly sure how much it is. Um, I've never had to like really retake an OA or had to take it like a fourth time. Um, you don't really hear many people taking it for a fourth time, but if you need to, just be aware that there's a small fee that you may have to pay for it. Um, again, if you have to retake it, you aren't alone. Um, uh, don't be so hard on yourself. Remember to have that growth mindset, set new goals. Um, it's an opportunity for growth. It's not a setback. You're going to be fine. Well, I hope you really enjoyed uh, this video today. Thank you so much for watching and just being a part of what it's like to um, get ready for an OA and pass it. Um, I really hope this helps you when you begin studying for your own OA <laughs> for whatever course that may be. Um, again, if you have any more questions or comments, just leave it down below and I'll be happy to answer them for you. Thank you again so much and see y'all again soon. Bye.